Karma is a Bitch by Chriselle Almeida. Faden, exterior Los Angeles day. Beautiful aerial shots of various famous Los Angeles landmarks such as the Hollywood sign, the Walk of Stars, Santa Monica Pier, the Venice Boardwalk, moving, moving along to the coastline in Malibu. Welcome to the city of angels. It should really be called the city of demons, but that wouldn't quite be good as for tourism. From the aerial shot, we zoom down into a window to a large mansion overlooking the beach. Cut to interior, expensive dining room day. Profile shot of a nicely dressed woman, Mrs. Spencer and man, Mr. Spencer, sitting at opposite ends of a dining room table, eating breakfast. In between them sits a seven-year-old little Indian girl, Karma. You know that lesson in the Bible, the one that says you have to be kind to every stranger you meet because you never know if it's actually God in disguise? Testing your true character? The camera spins around and we see the other side of the woman's face. She has a black eye. The woman looks over at the little girl in despair. But it turns out, more often than not, you end up meeting the devil in disguise, dressed in sheep's clothing. The man gets up and starts to walk away. Or in this case, Gucci. The girl reaches out her hand and touches the, the woman's wrist. Lightworkers are put on this earth to balance things out a bit. The woman inhales and then lets out a huge sigh of relief. I guess I've always had the power to take pain away. The woman gets up and walks to the window. She sees the man outside getting into his fancy car. The girl follows the woman to the window. As the man drives away, the girl touches her palm to the window. But that's not all. I've always found a way to miraculously balance the scales. Cut to exterior Pacific Coast Highway minutes later. Back to aerial shot, following the car from above as it winds down the PCH. So for all of you that wonder if there ever is justice in the world. The man reaches for his hot tea and tries to take a sip. The container has not been closed tightly enough and the boiling hot liquid falls all over him. He screams in agony as he gets burned. He swerves reflexively. Well, I'm here to reassure you that there is such a thing as karma. The car goes right off the road, crashing down the cliffs and bursting into flames. And I am a bitch. Blackout. Faden, interior Karma's crappy apartment, morning, present day. Karma, now in her late 20s, wakes up in a start. She has been sleeping on her couch. She wears skinny jeans and a tank top. She looks at her watch, realizes she is late, and jumps into action by putting on her Converse sneakers. She lifts up one side of her couch cushion and finds a quarter and a dime. She's somewhat satisfied. Lifts the other side of the cushion and finds a dollar and a nickel. She thinks she's won the lottery. She grabs her beat-up jacket and broken-in bag and leaves her apartment. She sees a three-day eviction notice stuck to her door. She rips it down, frustrated. She walks down the long hallway and hears death metal music blasting from her neighbor, Logan's apartment. She bangs on his door. Hey, Logan, it's way too early for Judas Priest. Karma keeps walking and passing another neighbor's door, Boots. She hears Fox News blasting from his TV. She bangs on his door. Hey, Boots, how many times have I told you David Asman is not gay despite his last name? Karma keeps walking down the hall and here's another neighbor, Cherry. Her musical theater voice is belting out, don't cry for me, Argentina. Karma bangs on the door. Hey, Cherry, you taking requests? Something from Rent would be most apropos. Cut two. exterior Karma's building moments later. Karma walks out of her building. She crumples up the eviction notice and throws it in the trash outside. She crosses the street while counting her change and walks into the bodega. Cut to exterior bodega moments later. Karma comes out with a small cup of coffee looking slightly more hopeful. She's about to take a sip when she looks across the street and sees Alex, a homeless man in his 40s with long hair and a beard. He's looking through the trash. Karma thinks about it for a second, then crosses the street back over to him. Hey Alex, I got you some coffee. Hope you don't mind it's black. As long as you didn't pee in it, I'm grateful. Do people really do that? And worse, people are fucked up. Thank you, Karma. No problem, enjoy. Karma crosses the street again and gets into her POS car. Cut to interior Karma's crappy car moments later. Karma tries to get her car to turn on, it won't start. The red gas light is on, she curses. She gets out of the car and runs to the bus stop. Cut to exterior bus stop moments later. Karma looks at her watch. She sighs as she sees a huge crowd of people but no bus in sight. Cut to. 
Interior, LA diner an hour later. Lunch rush hour is in full swing. Karma barges in the door, takes off her jacket and rushes towards the back kitchen. Cut to interior LA diner kitchen moments later. Karma rushes into the kitchen and sees her boss, Sal, an overweight man in his 60s. Karma reaches for her apron. I'm sorry, Sal. My car wouldn't start and you know how long it is it takes to get here by bus. Don't bother putting on your apron, Karma. I got it. No, yeah, I totally appreciate you covering for me, Sal, but I'm here now. Look, you're a good kid, Karma, but you're a walking disaster. I can't count on you. So what? You're firing me? But I already came out all this way. I don't know what to tell you. The strip club down the street is hiring a bartender. Um, or so I heard from the dishwashers, you can still use me as a reference. Yeah, I'll be sure to thank Carlos and Juan for the job lead. Um, so... Can I get my last paycheck then? Cut to exterior strip club soon after. Karma looks down at her paycheck for $147.58. She looks back up at the strip club. She takes a deep breath and walks in. Interior strip club moments later, Karma walks into a deserted club. There is only one girl on stage with one guy watching her. Karma looks around uneasily. Monty, the creepy looking boss in his forties rounds the corner and sees her. Hey, I don't have anyone else on the schedule today. Oh, who, me? Uh, oh, no, I I'm here to apply for the bartender job. Oh, okay, that's too bad, you're hot. You ever bartended before? Uh, yeah, yeah, for years at this place that's closing. I can't compete with the organic brewery that opened across the street. Fucking hate hipsters. Okay, not that you'll never ever need to, but uh, make me a white Russian. Monty moves towards the bar, Karma hesitates. Uh, mind if I use the bathroom first? I should wash my hands. Oh, yeah, because this place just screams sanitary. But sure, go ahead. Karma walks into the bathroom and immediately Googles how to make a white Russian. Cut two. Monty sips the drink and nods. Okay, you're hired. I'm Monty. I'm Karma. There's no paperwork to fill out. You work for tips only, and I'm going to need you to do some doubles. Okay, done. Thanks. Um, does it get any busier? Yeah, you should be able to make a whole month's rent over the weekend, Friday and Saturday night. That's tonight and tomorrow. Awesome. And I'll just stock the shelves. There's a break room in the back where the girls hang out. Karma heads to the back room and bumps into a dancer, Sophie, early 20s, who is so stunning that it's almost distracting. Oh, uh, sorry about that. That's cool. Are you the new bartender? Yeah, I'm bar I'm Karma. Wait. Karma, from the orphanage? Karma stops in her tracks and stares at the dancer. Sophie? <sighs> Little Sophie, holy shit! <laughs> They're all grown up. They hug. I can't believe it's you. Cut to flashback, interior, dorm room night, 15 years ago. 13-year-old Karma and eight-year-old Sophie are lying in bed side by side in a dorm room full of beds with other children sleeping. Sophie has welts on her arms from where she was beaten by a belt. Karma takes Sophie's little hands in hers. It feels better when you do that. Oh, I plan to do more. Sister Maria's gonna find herself in a rather sticky situation, let's just say. I don't know why I gotta learn all these prayers anyway. I've been praying a really long time and no family wants me. Cut back to present day, interior strip club break room moments later. I don't blame you for running away but things got way worse after you left. I'm really sorry. No, don't be. You were the only one who made me feel better and stood up to them. Well, someone had to. <laughs> I'll never forget how you got back at Sister Maria when she used the belt on me. Yeah, she had to have surgery to unglue that toilet seat <laughs> from her ass, didn't she? <laughs> <sighs> oh, like, what's it been? 15 years? I was what? eight when you left? Yeah. Yeah. I was 13. I just couldn't, you know, with those nuns, you know. Cut to flashback interior convent day 15 years ago, a preteen karma with her hands out and a nun is using a ruler on her knuckles. They're bleeding. The nun keeps hitting her. Your name is Carmeline. Say it. Carmeline. My name is Karma. No. Karma is a Hindu nonsense. You came to us as Carmeline. That's your name. Say it. None hits her again. My name is Karma. 
Cut back to present day. Interior, strip club, break room moments later. So what happened after you left? Oh, well, it's a long story, but we have time to catch up now. Interior strip club the next night. Karma is surrounded by men at the bar yelling out drink orders. She goes as fast as she can, opening beer bottles. There's a group of guys with a bachelor party waiting for her to finish pouring shots. Oh, that's seven shots, 70 bucks. The best man gives her $100. Change. The guys all do a round of shots together. They cheer. Seriously, why didn't I work here before? <laughs> Another guy, a creepy loner, flags her over. Are, uh, are you a veterinarian? Not all Indians are doctors. What? No, I just meant uh, that these pythons are sick. <laughs> <laughs> Karma rolls her eyes and walks away. She pours a glass of water, takes it over to Sophie, who is flirting with a guy. Hey. Stay hydrated. Sophie turns towards Karma and drinks the drink. The guy smacks Sophie on the ass. Hey, asshole. What part of look, don't touch is confusing you? Ooh, looks like we got a bartender and bouncer rolled up into one. Smacking isn't touching. It's smacking. He smacks Sophie's ass again. Karma gets out from behind the bar. All right, that's it. You're out of here. Karma is about to grab him when Monty interjects. Yeah, that's uh, going to cost you, buddy. $20 a smack. I think you owe the lady $40. The guy takes out two $20 bills and hands it to Sophie. Whatever. This place sucks. Asshole guy leaves. Hey, take it easy. These girls can handle themselves. Why the fuck don't you have a bouncer? Ah, that's the other job we needed to fill. Interior, Karma's apartment building hallway later at 3 a.m. Karma is exhausted and makes her way towards her apartment. As she uses her keys to open the door, one of her neighbors, Boots, in his late 50s, opens his door and pokes his head out. He's wearing PJs, but still has boots and a gun holster on. He speaks with a Texas accent. Late night again? Boots, I told you not to stay up waiting for me. This new job gets me in at dawn. I gotta make sure my girl is safe. There are a lot of crazies out there. Wait a minute, you used to be a cop, right? Texas Ranger, 25 years. Till the boys found out I was gay and ran me out of town. Huh, they're lost. Uh, you know, I was just thinking, you want a job? We could carpool. Interior, Karma's apartment next morning. Karma counts 10 $100 bills. Eight, 900, 1,000, yes! Monty was not lying. She puts the cash in an envelope and writes on it, rent, apartment three. She gets up and walks out her door. She walks by her neighbor Logan's place where another loud record is being blasted. She knocks on his door. Jesus, Logan, can't you at least play Elliot Smith on a Sunday morning? The door opens, Logan, <laughs> cute <laughs> yet, um, sorry, a weird yet cute looking guy in his early thirties wearing a Clash t-shirt opens the door. He holds a cup of coffee. Want some coffee? Yeah, sure, thanks, but you know, I can't stay long. I gotta go drop off my late rent. She enters his messy apartment, laptops, computer monitors hooked up everywhere. This guy is a tech whiz. He pours her a cup. She looks at his screen and sees several windows open that say 144,000 prophesized, 144,000 earth angels. 144,000 light workers. What the fuck is this? He closes the laptop and shuts off everything quickly. No, nothing, just uh, doing some research. For what, the end of the world? He hesitates. Okay, I'm just gonna assume it's some new band. You'd be one of them. One of what? One of the chosen. Okay, so when it comes to hacking shit, you're the best, but dude, come on, this shit is weird. So you don't believe in good and evil? I mean, sure, like, Good whiskey can still give you an evil hangover. I just thought, with all the things that you've been through, that you'd get it. Like the car crash with that guy who adopted you. Speaking of my past, I met this girl that I knew from my orphanage days. Seems like she turned out all right. Where'd you meet her? The strip club I'm working at. As a bartender. But yeah, she was like my little sister back in the day. 
I thought you ran away because of the crazy moons. Yeah, I kept telling myself that Sophie was younger and therefore more adoptable. But you know, I always felt guilty about leaving her. Maybe she's a light worker too. A lot of virgins are. Virgin. Was I not clear that she's a stripper? Interior strip club night a few weeks later. Karma has gotten the hang of bartending and moves fast, anticipating everyone's needs. She looks over to see Boots standing by the door checking IDs as guys enter. She smiles. Cut to interior strip club a few hours later, closing time. Several strippers sit at the bar counting their money. Karma grabs a bag of garbage and heads out back. Cut to exterior strip club back alley moments later. Karma tosses the garbage and is about to head back when she hears Monty talking to someone around the corner. She hears the other person's voice. She stops, frozen. Looks like she has been hit by a truck. She moves slowly and peers over to see who it is. She sees Chance, a gorgeous man in his early 40s who wears a designer's suit. She inhales deeply and can't exhale. She stares at him. Cut to flashback. Interior coffee shop date two years ago. Karma is the barista behind the counter. The same man, Chance, comes up to the register. He is dressed more casually, but still looks impeccable. What can I get you? Let's see. Uh, a large fat, non, non-fat latte. Anything else? Your vote would be great. I'm running for governor. My campaign office is right around the corner. Oh, yeah, yeah, I've seen the ads. Don't you have interns to get you coffee? Is that your way of asking me for a job? No. If I had an intern, I wouldn't get to talk to you, would I? Okay, well, since we're talking and you're getting your coffee yourself, you know that a cup like this costs six fifty. That's half of what the hourly minimum wage currently is, which means people like me who make this coffee for you cannot afford to actually buy a cup themselves. Good point, noted. Well, if you work for me as a consultant, I can assure you I would pay you far more than minimum wage. You're offering me a job? Yeah, think about my offer. I could use someone with your perspective on my team. He leaves his card in a $50 bill, winks at her and leaves. Cut back to present. Karma is still frozen. She can't make out what um, they are saying. They shake hands and Monty moves makes a move towards the door, causing Karma to bolt back inside. Cut to interior strip club, back room moments later. Karma rushes in looking flustered and pale. Sophie is changing into her street clothes. Whoa, are you okay? He's here. Who? Our governor, Chance Howard, the only man I've ever loved. Cut to flashback. Interior campaign office, late night a few years ago. Chance is leaning against the desk. His chief of staff, Michael, a white man in his late 60s is pacing. Also present is his PR manager, Diane, a white woman in her 50s. Karma doodles in her notebook in the corner. We need a better slogan. I'm still, I'm still coming across as an entitled privileged man who doesn't understand the working class. So what do the minorities want to hear? Yeah, what do you people want? First off, to not be called you people. But, you know, it's simple, really. We just want the things you take for granted, like the opportunities that just fall into your lap from going to good schools, to working better jobs. We just want a chance, a chance to succeed. That's perfect. If you want a chance, take a chance. People do love double entendres. Uh, that's when something has a double meaning. Yeah, I know what a double entendre is. My name is Karma, and I've been called a bitch a few times. Yeah, I like that. If you want a chance, take a chance. It's vague yet specific. It works. I knew there was a reason I hired you. He smiles at Karma, who can't help but feel validated. Cut to present. Exterior, strip club, parking lot. A little later, Boots walks to his car with Karma and Sophie. Yeah, I never should have trusted him. My gut told me to stay away, but my heart took over. Your heart has shit for brains. They get into the car. Boots drives. Karma is up front and Sophie gets in the back. Thank you so much for letting me stay over your place tonight. Stupid termites. Yeah, no, it's fine. So uh, anyway, things were professional until the night he won. I mean, we were celebrating. We were champagne. 
Cut to flashback. Interior, a fancy house in Beverly Hills night one year ago. The victory party for Chance is in full swing. Karma is in the corner sipping a drink. I think a few words are in order. <clears throat> Chance? People cheer. It's been, it's been quite a journey and I couldn't have done it without each and every one of you. So thank you all and cheers. More cheering. Chance looks over at Karma and smiles. She smiles back. He walks over to her. So this really smart woman came up with my winning slogan and I just have to tell her, I'm glad you took a chance on me. I won't let you down. Cut to present. Interior Karma's apartment an hour later. Karma and Sophie are both in Karma's small bed. Karma drinks wine from a bottle and Sophie eats ice cream out of a carton. They keep switching and sharing. Okay. I don't see how any girl could resist all that. He's hot, rich, powerful, and called you smart. I probably would have given him my virginity. Wait, you're a virgin? Yeah. Well, not because of the nuns. Just because <clears throat> I'm sick of people seeing me like that, you know? Like when you're a stripper, sex is the last thing you want. It's like if we worked in an ice cream parlor, we definitely would not be coming home and eating this. I guess. So what happened next? Cut to flashback. Interior fancy house later that night. The final guests say goodbye to Chance and head out. Karma is about to leave as well. Hey, wait a second. Do you want to stay for one more drink? I can have my chauffeur drive you home. Um, would be a step up from Uber. Sure, thanks. Chance goes over to the bar and pours them two whiskeys. When I said I could not have done it without everyone before, you know I was really talking about you. Right. He walks over, hands her a drink. And Michael and Diane. It was you. You are my good luck charm. He leans in and kisses her. She hesitates for a second, but then kisses him back hard. They start making out. Clothes come off. Cut to present. Interior, Karma's bedroom soon after. That is so romantic. So did he become your boyfriend after that? Not exactly. That was when he stopped answering my texts. Seriously? Okay, wow, I am never voting for him again. Yeah, and that's not even the worst of it. Cut to flashback. Interior Karma's apartment bathroom night, 10 months ago. Karma sits on the floor with a pregnancy test in her hand. It has a plus sign on it. She pulls out her phone and texts Chance, we really need to talk, it's important. Gets an undelivered response. She sighs. Cut to. Interior, abortion clinic, day, a week later. Karma sits with a gown on and with her legs in stirrups. A doctor looks over her paperwork. So you're 28 and this is your first pregnancy? Yep. Uh, are you sure you want to go through with this? I'm sure. Okay. Is there anyone I can call? There's no one. Cut to present. Interior, Karma's apartment a few minutes later. Karma and Sophie are now lying down in bed with the lights off looking at each other. That sucks. I wish I could have been there. Yeah. I think that was my karma for leaving you alone with those sadistic nuns. No, don't say that. You do not deserve what he put you through. I mean, he used you and then dumped you. I'm so sorry. No, no, it's okay. I just never thought I'd have to see him again. But hopefully tonight will be the last time. Oh, you don't know? Know what? He owns the club. Karma sits up straight. Oh, what? wait, what? Yeah, I mean, it's totally on the DL, but he's into some sketchy shit with Monty. Like probably money laundering or whatever you see in the movies. Uh, he owns the club? Yeah, he owns a lot of strip clubs. He comes by every month or so. Okay, you gotta be shitting me. Does that mean you're not going to work there anymore? Oh, that sucks. I was just getting used to having you around again. Karma thinks about it. Cut to flashback. Interior orphanage dorm night, 15 years ago. 13-year-old Karma stands over a sleeping Sophie. She kneels down and inhales Sophie's hair. Karma places her hands over Sophie's arms. Karma closes her eyes and focuses her energy over Sophie, then gets up and walks away. Cut to present. Interior Karma's apartment, almost dawn, moments later. The sun is starting to rise outside. You know what? I'm not leaving you this time. 
I'm sick of running away. I'm stank. Yay. Besides, he's probably more scared of you anyway. You got him to where he is. And I'm sure he knows that. You could take him down too, if you wanted. Take him down? I mean, I would need an army to help me do that. Well, you have me. That's a start, right? Cut two. Interior Karma's apartment hallway next morning. Sophie exit Karma's apartment. Karma locks the door. Logan opens his door and sticks his head out. Oh, hey, Logan. This is Sophie. Hi. Um, hi. <laughs> Are you playing the Get Up Kids? I, um, uh, <laughs> did you know? This one foster family had a son who was way into emo stuff. Yeah, we're going to get some brunch. Want to join? Yeah, come. Bottomless mimosas. Okay. Cut to exterior cafe soon after. Karma, Sophie, and Logan are enjoying brunch outside. Okay, I have not had extra money to spend like this in ever. Oh, yeah. The money is pretty addicting, but... I wish I could do something else. There's just not much out there for a high school dropout, though. Well, I could give you a new identity of a person who has a PhD from Harvard. Hey, why haven't you offered to do that for me? Okay, if we were really going to form an army to bring down Governor Chase, then we need someone like Logan on our side. Logan blushes. Wait, is it finally happening? Can I use my hacking skills to bring down the man? This one man in particular. Cut to interior, strip club break room, early morning, a week later. The club is closing up. Karma eats a cup of noodles while the other girls change into their regular clothes. Opal, a very pregnant stripper, has her feet up. Oh, I could hardly do these heels when I wasn't pregnant. Just take off your shoes or flats, best it's a liability. Guys are not looking down at your feet. Some guys are. Okay. Did the doctor say it's okay for you to still be dancing? Asking with concern, not judgment. I should have stopped last week, technically. But it's not like I can get paid maternity leave. Okay, this is crazy. How long have you worked here? Since I turned 20? So, five years. I've never worked more than five months on a job. Wait, was that a jab? Far from it. I think you should be rewarded for your dedicated years of service. Karma gets up and walks towards the door and pokes her head into the main club area. Hey, Monty, get in here. We need to talk. Karma goes back into the break room. Okay. What are some other things that need to be changed? Talk to me, ladies. Natasha, another stripper, speaks up. Um, I think we should be tipping out the house less. Wait, how much do you give them a night? <laughs> $200 each? No way, that's too much. Monty walks in confused. What's going on here? Okay, these ladies are getting a shitty deal working here. That's what's going on. They bring in all the money, Monty, you know it. They should not have to pay you that much. Oh yeah? And who do they think keeps the lights on in this club so guys can see their tits in the first place? Okay, I said that much. $100 tip out from each girl per shift is plenty. $50 to the house and $50 to Boots. And I'll do the same. Oh, okay. Oh, anything else? Well, let's start small. We need a real kitchen. That's starting small? And you have a microwave. Yeah, I'm just getting started. These ladies need all the perks of a regular job. Proper, proper medical insurance, retirement. Oh, you're being serious. Tell you what, if you really want all those benefits, why don't you go start a stripper's union? Karma pauses. Monty thinks he has won. All right. Glad that's over. Monty walks out. Well, that was pointless. No, no, it wasn't. That's exactly what we're going to do. Start only paying him $50 and not a dime more? Yes, that too. Like he said, I'm going to help you guys start your own stripper union. There is silence. Then the girls erupt in laughter. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> and what would be tax deductible? Our pasties? Yeah, probably. Look, ladies, I know how to do this. I learned a lot on the campaign trail. So you're going to use the exact things you learned from working on Governor Howard's campaign, 
to bring him down. Okay, you need to stop saying bring him down, but yes. Karma steps into the center of the room. Look, I am not doing this so I can get revenge. I am doing it because it's the right thing to do for all of you. And there are other clubs. There are so many other women that we can help. So think of this on the larger scale, bigger picture, if you will. All of us working together can make this a national thing. Women all over the country should get real benefits. Being a dancer is a hard job. It takes skill, endurance, patience. I see how hard you ladies work every day. This is your job. For some, it's a career. Exactly. And even though you never get a business card or a promotion, you still show up on time. You dance your ass off, even if you have a bad knee. That's loyalty. And that should be rewarded. Who's with me? The ladies cheer and clap. I think he was just jealous that you'd make a better governor. Your army increases. Boots has been listening and speaks suddenly. The ladies jump. I'd like to throw my hat in the ring as commander of the army. Very funny. Once you got Logan on board, I knew we were in business. You're the brain, I'm the brawn, Logan is the batter boy, and Sophie's the babe. What's the purpose of the babe? To be used as a distraction. It's, I appreciate you coming on board. And yes, there should be a union for bouncers too. So I will look into it. I don't care about that. I just want to bring down the bullies. Okay, so I guess everyone's making this a thing. Oh, it's definitely a thing. Can we call ourselves Karma Club? Like Fight Club? No. Cut to black. Exterior, Karma's apartment, a week later. Karma is lugging groceries back to her apartment from the bodega across the street. Alex is sitting on the steps outside her building reading a newspaper. Hey Alex, what's going on in the world? Demons are still winning. Yeah, well, we've decided to do something about it. Let me know if you want to join the Karma Army. So it's happening. The light workers are being awakened. Dude, have you been talking to Logan about that shit? He thinks there's some angels out there or something. They're not angels per se, but there are special beings that live in human bodies. And once they wake up and remember who they are, they activate their power. Which is? To bring about real change in the world. To diminish the collective negativity, pain, sadness, and shame that radiates around most people. Okay. She starts to leave, then stops. She turns around. Hey, Alex. I don't mean to offend you, but I just wanted to offer as a friend. If you'd like to use my shower sometime, I wouldn't mind. Alex thinks about it for what feels like an eternity. Okay. What about now? Now? Yeah, sure. Let me just put these groceries away. Alex gets up and starts helping her. Cut to interior Karma's apartment half an hour later. Karma paces outside the bathroom. She tries to tidy up her apartment. Thank you for letting me use your razor and um, your scissors and berry conditioner. Keep it all. Alex pops his head out of the bathroom door. He is only wearing a towel. He has showered, shaved, and cut his hair. He is a full-on hottie. Hey, I think I could use the laundry uh, in your building and wash my clothes. I have quarters. Karma's completely taken aback by how different he looks. Um, what? I don't want to put on dirty clothes again now that I'm all clean. Oh, yeah, yeah, uh, hold on. I'll be right back. Karma runs out the door and down the hall. She knocks on Logan's door. He opens it and Karma plows right in. Hey, what's up? You know homeless Alex? From outside? Yeah, he's in my apartment. Currently, naked. Holy shit, did he attack you? Did he expose himself? Wait, what? No, 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 no. He was talking to me about the same <clears throat> shit you did the other day about the light workers, and I just, I, I don't know, I felt something. Then I asked him if he wanted to take a shower at my place, so he's in there now, in my towel, looking all shirtless and hot, and oh, and and then side note, he cut his hair and shaved. He's like really hot. Yeah, you said that twice already. Okay, he needs clothes, clean clothes, so... Give me something. 
cut to interior karma's apartment soon after alex is wearing camouflage fatigue shorts and a black t-shirt with a dropkick murphy's on it he is cutting tomatoes and has boiling water for pasta karma sits in shock watching him and drinking a glass of red wine thank you for letting me cook for you uh-huh. it's the least i can do for this kindness i feel like a new man you uh look like a new man so um Yep. Tell me your story. Like, how the hell did I become homeless? Um, yeah. What would I say if I told you that I wasn't really homeless? That I actually am a wealthy heir with an endless fortune? And that I choose to give it all up to test myself and observe humanity? Yeah, I'd say that sounds like a fairy tale. Alex comes close to her. Karma inhales sharply. And what if I was also searching for someone? a special woman. I watched you for a while now, Karma. I seen what you do. Um, Alex, this is getting kind of weird. Alex stops immediately and backs up. Forgive me, <laughs> I, I didn't mean to scare you. Karma gets up and takes a few steps towards him. Um, it's just that I'm feeling something I haven't felt in a long time. Alex takes a few steps back towards her. I'm feeling something I've never felt before. Karma hesitates, then takes a step closer to Alex. Alex? Alex takes the last step towards her. He takes her face in his hands. She does not resist. He kisses her. They look at each other. I can't get hurt again. I'd never hurt you. You're precious. They kiss again, deeper. Cut two. Interior, strip club afternoon. It's a slow afternoon shift. Karma is behind the bar cutting limes and Sophie sits at the bar painting her nails. So you kiss your homeless neighbor? As contradictory as that description is, yes. Um, I don't mean to sound like a snob, but you can do better. <laughs> you know, I'm not normally like this. Yeah, I think I'm under some sort of Ugly. spell or something. So how was the kiss? Are you on it? I felt like I could inhale his entire soul through his mouth. Wow, that good, huh? Ooh, you're in trouble. You know who else is in trouble? Logan. He's crushing on you big time. Really? Oh, he's adorable. Maybe we could go on a double date? Yeah, that'll happen. So where are we on the Karma Project? Forming a union is no joke. I think I may need to start smaller and just help the ladies that work at the governor's own clubs first. Becoming a US citizen was child's play compared to this. Wait, so you weren't born in the States? Nope, India. I was adopted by a hoity-toity rich family in Malibu when I was seven. Cut to flashback. Interior, LAX airport day 20 years ago. A seven-year-old karma is being escorted by a bubbly flight attendant who scans the crowd with signs in the international arrival area. Welcome to America, honey. I'm sure your new mom and dad will be waiting for you. We see a chauffeur with a sign that says Carmeline Spencer. Oh, that's you, isn't it? Karma shakes her head no. I thought her parents would be here. Oh, Mr. and Mrs. Spencer had a fundraiser to attend. I am to drive Miss Carmeline home. Flight attendant hesitates. Um, all right then. <laughs> you go ahead with this nice man. Karma walks over to him. Nice to meet you, Miss Carmeline. My name is Karma. Cut back to present. Sophie puts on fake eyelashes using a compact mirror. So when did you get to the orphanage? A few years later. My dad through adoption, and I use that term loosely, was a real piece of shit. Controlling, abusive to his wife. But he got what he deserved. What happened to him? He spilled hot tea on his lap and drove himself off a cliff off the PHC one morning. He died? Right on impact. Holy shit. So wasn't the mom happy to have you without him? Nah. Adoption was his idea, to look good in the community. I think she always wanted a child of her own, just not with him. So she was happy to be free of him. With all that money, she sent gifts for the first year I was up at the orphanage, but then that dried up. I often wonder what happened to her. 
cut to interior strip club a few nights later. Karma is wiping down the bar. It is busy, but not packed. Boots comes in from outside and heads straight to her. It's happening tonight. The big dogs are assembling. I see cars. You mean Chance? He's here? Karma rushes out we'll behind the bar. We'll be soon. They'll hit in that through the back door. There's a secret room. You see that mirror there? It actually looks out onto the stage from said room. Oh, shit. I got to get out of here. He can't see me. Get to the back and stay there. I'll text you when the coast is clear. Karma rushes towards the back. Then she stops, thinks for a minute, and walks over onto the stage where Sophie is dancing. Whispers in her ear. Sophie nods. Sophie moves towards another stripper and whispers in he her ear. This continues along the club as all the women communicate with each other. They all slowly congregate in the back room. Karma is waiting for them. Okay, everyone, gather around. Now is when we're doing this. And this is what it is, what's happening. We are officially going on strike until the owner of this establishment will guarantee some reasonable perks and protection in exchange for what you endure on a nightly basis with most of the clientele out there. So that's it? If we don't dance, we don't get paid tonight? I will ask for back compensation for every day you do not come around. Yeah, but if they just tell us to leave, like what if we're out of jobs? Do you remember how long you went without a bartender? Jody was running back and forth covering the bar between dance sets, am I right? Dancers nod. And what about how long they took to get a bouncer? And we probably still would be relying on each other. I hadn't brought boots in. Dancers agree. So no one is going to replace 20 awesome dancers when they know it'll be easier to just pay what I'm asking. The more they can afford, they more, more than they can afford it. They just have had to give it in before. I need you to all stay strong with me. Trust me when I say I have more leverage than you think. Just then, Monty storms in the back room. What the fuck is going on here? I don't pay you to sit around like it's some support group. That's right, Monty. You don't pay them at all. The customers out there pay them. And then these ladies pay you. So technically, you work for them. Are you kidding me again with this shit? And today seemed like the perfect day to make our point. Actions speak louder than words. I'm sure your boss won't appreciate the lack of movement on the stage. Oh, what the fuck do you know? I'm just asking for a chance to renegotiate working terms. You're fucking fired. That's fine. I can leave, but these ladies are going to walk with me. Let's go, ladies. Sophie dramatically grabs her coat and starts packing up her bag. Some of the others start to do the same. Right. Whoever leaves now, don't bother coming back. Opal lets out a sharp pain, uh, noise in pain. She grabs her stomach. Oh, fuck this. I am not having my baby on stage. I'm out of here. Opal leaves and others follow her. Monty moves in close on Karma. Oh, you just made a big mistake. You have no idea what you're getting involved in. Boots shows up right behind uh, Monty and puts his hand on his shoulder. Monty jumps. You better show Miss Karma some respect. I believe she asked you to speak with your boss. Boots pulls back his blazer to reveal his favorite gun. All right, Jesus, take it easy. Fine, come with me. And for the record, you're fired too, asshole. Karma, Boots, and Sophie follow Monty to the secret room. Karma turns to her friends. Look. I can take it from here. We're right outside. Sophie takes out a folder from her bag and hands it to Karma. You got it. Monty leads Karma in the door of the secret room. She sees Chance standing, looking out onto the dance floor, concerned and confused to see no dancers and men starting to leave. He turns as they enter. It takes him a moment to register that it is Karma. Karma? Hello, Chance. You're a stripper now? Ah, careful, Governor. The politically correct word is exotic dancer. But you should know that, given that you own so many clubs. This bitch is a new bartender, and she's been causing all sorts of trouble, boss. Giving our girls all these kinds of ideas, like massage chairs in the break room. No, well, you just gave me that idea. She's a real smart-ass, boss. Don't think she realizes how difficult we can make things for her. Get out. Monty's confused. Me? Yes. Out. Now. Monty sheepishly leaves. 
What would you say if I said, I never stopped thinking about you? I'd say, I don't believe you. <sighs> Look, Karma, I know you're upset that I didn't call you back, but life just got so busy after I won. Formal fundraisers, low key drug cartels. I get it. Careful there. You know me enough to know I try to stay out of it. Messy business. But once I get behind a good cause, once I take a step towards a good fight, I am not backing down. All right. What do you want? I'll give all the girls a bonus, $1,000, and you will be the hero. Does that work for you? Nice try. Here's a list of the upgrades that will happen to all the clubs you own. Besides basic necessities like better dressing rooms, bathrooms, and kitchen areas, you will also offer supportive HR perks, such as additional discounts from payout from working moms that have to pay for childcare. You will take $250 each for wages lost tonight just at this club, and I accept your offer for the $1,000 bonus. We can make that a regular end of year thing. There's a lot more on here on medical insurance, maternity leave. I'm sure your lawyers can go over it all with you. Wow. You are still such a firecracker. I love it. No, really, it's adorable. You're like a hot Indian Nancy Drew lawyer. You were fun, I'll give you that. You'll give me a lot more. Car Karma pulls out other documents with graphs and bank accounts. I also have other lists, ones which show your dealings with some rather nefarious characters. I don't understand computer jumble jamble, but I have a friend who assures me your IT tech's team security is pretty piss poor. And the few attempts that you made to hide the bank accounts in the Caymans fell apart easily. Chance looks genuinely stumped now. So, Chance, you better accept my demands and shell out the 5% loss that it will mean for your entire criminal enterprise. Because I now know exactly how much money you launder through these clubs each year. It's either you comply or all this information goes directly to the, to the district attorney's office who if I can recall, always thought you were fake as shit. And man, was she right. And I feel compelled to say that if anything happens to me, this information will all be leaked to the press and the authorities will come for you. Chance can't find the words. You will notice that I put aside severance pay to myself and Boots and Sophie, since none of us will be working here anymore. This has showed me that we can do some good elsewhere. Karma goes close to him. Yeah, I can't believe I thought I loved you once. But I guess there was a bigger reason for us to meet. So long, Chance. Karma leaves the room. Chase stands in shock. He pulls out his phone, makes a call. A female voice picks up. Hello? We have a problem. Her name is Karma. Cut to interior Malibu mansion, same time. Mrs. Spencer, a woman in her 50s, wealthy and well-dressed, holds the phone. She's dramatically revealed that it, she is none other than the very woman who adopted Karma many years ago. Did you say, did you say Karma? Cut to blackout. End of pilot. Yay! Yay! <laughs> Yay!